Hello, Fremont Ross. This is Mr. Shell. I'm here with you today to help schedule you for your sophomore year. Uh, normally, I go into the classrooms and we take about a full class period, about 45 minutes, to go through the information that you need in order to schedule for your sophomore year. This year, uh, we're doing it virtually because of the hybrid schedule. Uh, I have sent a packet of information through final forms to you regarding scheduling. In that packet, you'll find a letter of information for you and your parents, so please read that letter first. Uh, you also have other various documents from helpful websites and things of that nature that are included in your packet that I will be referring to throughout this uh, presentation. So you may want to pull that up, print it off if you can, or at least have it up so that you can refer to it uh, as I'm going through my presentation. Uh, without that, any further hesitation, I want to get going. I don't want this to be a 45-minute video. I'm trying to keep it around 18 minutes for you, maybe a little less if I can. Um, we start off by going to the course offerings book. The course offerings book is probably going to be the most um, useful booklet that you can have regarding scheduling. So you go to FremontSchools.net first, then you click on Schools, go to Ross High School, and then You'll scroll down on the side over here and you'll see course offerings requirements for 21-22 school year. You'll click on that. This is your, basically the be all end all of everything you wanna know about scheduling. Um, it talks about your, um, the programs we offer, different, different options you have, your graduation requirements, uh, how to get honors, diplomas, et cetera, et cetera. So everything that you can possibly think about um, regarding scheduling or graduation, is loaded up into this class. You are the class of 2024. You have your own special little page here that tells you the things that you can take and the things that you may be interested in um, taking that are available to you right here on this page. As you scroll down a little bit further, you're going to find that each of our classes has a paragraph designated to it that will help you determine whether or not this is a class that you may like or may not like. So for example, if you are wondering what animal and plant science is all about, do I want to take that or don't I? You simply go to the course offerings book, look up the Ag Department, Animal Science. There it is right here, and you will, it will tell you exactly what that class is all about. If it sounds cool, that's great. You can sign up for it. If you're like, eh, I don't think I want to do that, then go on to something else. Nothing says that you have to take these classes. Um, but again, the reason why we have the descriptions in the course offerings book is so that you can make a better decision on what you would like to take um, for your sophomore year. Okay, so keeping that in mind, we're going to move forward now to uh, the next thing in our presentation, and that is the roadmap, I like to call it, and that's the big picture. This is what I think, and it is in your packet of information, that you should refer to when making your selections. Everybody needs to have four years of English. You've all taken English 9. If you've passed English 9, that's awesome. And it's great, and we're moving on to English 10. Uh, there are different options for English 10, and we'll get to those here in a few minutes. Then obviously your junior year and your senior year, you're gonna take English 11 and English 12. You need four credits of math, three credits of science, three social studies, uh, including government and financial lit. Down here, you're gonna have, or up here rather, you're gonna have your health, phys ed, little, path, little giant pathways and, and art requirements. So all of those need to be taken in order to graduate. You also need to come up with some electives that will get you from your 16 credits to your 21 and a half credits. And then you will have to pass your OST, which is English and math, your English and your algebra OST scores will have to be passing. If you can't pass those, there are other options available and I'll get to those here in just a few minutes uh, and explain that a little bit more in detail. So as we move on from the big picture, talk about the graduation requirements that I was just a second ago. This is what the state of Ohio has put out, and this is also in your packet of information that I sent to you in the final forms. You have to cover the basics. This is what we do at Ross. This is our Ross High School graduation requirements. We're good, okay? Second thing you have to do is show competency in some areas being algebra and English. So by doing that, by scoring high enough in your algebra OST and your English 2 OST, you will be checking that box and you'll be good to go. If you do that, you can move right on to the third box, which is the showing of readiness, and that's your seals. If you do not, for some reason, score high enough in your math and your English 
uh, OSTs, there are other options that you can do so that you can graduate. Uh, the first option is you can come up with two of these activities here, a proficiency web ex exam, a 12-point industry credential, free apprenticeship program, work-based learning, any of these things here. Um, and generally speaking, uh, most of these uh, can be obtained through Vanguard. So you can get a lot of that through Vanguard. Military enlistment is a second option. So if you don't want to do this, you can do the military advancement. And then, of course, if neither of these two are in your ballpark, you can go to the college coursework and you can take a math or English class at Terra, pass the class, and that will count as your competency. The third thing you need to graduate is you need to have SEALs. There are two SEALs that you need in order to graduate from Ross, in order to graduate in the state of Ohio from any high school for that matter. Um, one of those has to be from the state of Ohio, and you'll see those are denoted here with the Ohio in parentheses. Um, so you can take you can take both of them from the state of Ohio if you want, but one of them must be from the state of Ohio, and then the other can be a local seal if you wanted to do that. These seals, um, I will be giving more detail on those seals at a later date. I don't want to spend a lot of time on that at this point, just because of the amount of time we have to get through this uh, presentation. Okay, so now back to the program at hand. Let's go back to that packet that I sent you. And you'll notice in that packet is a scheduling paper. It looks just like this, okay? All of the classes on this sheet are for you and they can be taken by sophomores. If it's not on this sheet, you cannot take it. If you look through that course offerings book and you see, oh, here's a cool class, uh, whether it be phot photography three, you'd like to take. You can't take that class. It's not open to you. It's only open to juniors and seniors. So the classes that are open to you are on this sheet. So if you see a really neat class that you might want to take that's loaded into that, that course offerings book, if it's not on this sheet, you will not be able to sign up for it. Okay, so keep that in mind as you're looking through that course offerings book. Make sure it is offered to 10th graders so that you can take it. As you notice, there's some, there's some numbers down this, this left-hand column, okay? These numbers are extremely important, and I'm going to tell you why in a second. Uh, these are the uh, numbers that you will eventually end up entering into our computer system so that you can get the class associated with it. So 1210 is your English 10 class you'll end up putting that into a computer so that you can um, schedule that class for yourself, for your sophomore season, for your sophomore year. Everybody needs to take an English. You'll all need to take math. You'll all need to take a science, and you'll all need to take a history, okay? That's mandatory as a sophomore. Uh, you'll notice the math, you have three options. If you are currently in fundamentals as a freshman, you're going to take algebra. Obviously, algebra, you're currently taking algebra, you're going to move to geometry, and geometry, you move to algebra two. So those are the logical next steps, okay? As we move through this, you'll see different science electives. Notice in the column out to the right-hand side, we'll give you some specific instruction. For example, these orange, two orange classes are BGSU classes offered at Ross High School. They're open to you if you want. They're worth your full credit, plus they're also worth credit for college. But in order to take those classes, you need to have at least a 3.25 minimum GPA. You have to attend the CCP virtual meeting, and you have to apply to Bowling Green State University by the May 15th deadline. So those three things have to happen in order for you to sign up for these two classes. Okay, so keeping that in mind. History, you all have to take a history. These are the other classes. I'm not going to go through the classes with you one by one to let you know anything about them because you can go through the course offerings book and look them up. I will go through a few of them that may need some extra attention. First is the Computer Science Principles 1 and Computer Science Principles 2. These are brand new this year to Ross and we're really excited to offer them. Uh, they're going to be going through the foundations of modern computing. You'll do some programming, some app design, some algorithms. You'll work with the internet. You'll do cybersecurity. Very interesting uh, courses. They're a half year each, okay? If you take both of them together, that will count as a full credit of computer science, and that would check off your box for your technology seal, one of the seals that we talked about previously in the presentation, okay? You'll notice here in this column that if there's a 1 or a 0.5 or below 0.5, and if it's a 1, that is a full credit, so that means it takes a whole year. 
Um, if it's only a 0.5 or less, 0.25 in the in the examples of phys ed, um, that only takes a half a year. So it would be from when we start in August until December or from January when we come back from break until the end of the year in June. So it was only it would only take half of a year to take those 0.50 or less classes. So you're aware when you're scheduling, that's how much time you're going to have to block out for that. Okay. We have two classes here, officiating and athletics that are new also. If you would like to learn how to become an official in basketball or basketball and baseball or in football and in wrestling, you can sign up for one of those two classes. It's a, a half credit of your phys ed and you will uh, exit the course with a licensure so you can become um, a basketball, like for a YMCA league, you could be a basketball rep or you can umpire baseball in the summer for a summertime job because you will have your license for that if you take those two classes, which is kind of a fun way to go. Uh, anything that says auditions, you can sign up for, but keep in mind, you may or may not get in based on the audition. If there's a, a requisite here, for example, if you wanted to take French or Spanish two, if you didn't get a C in the first part of French one or Spanish one, then do not sign up for Spanish French two or Spanish two, because you're probably not going to do very well in that class. It just keeps getting a little bit more uh, difficult as you go. Okay, so all of those things together uh, are the classes that you can take as a sophomore here at Ross. So next, let's go to the pager paper in your packet that says sophomore practice. <laughs> this schedule, as you can see, has eight periods on it. That's how many periods we have in our school day. And I know part of you or some of you are thinking, well, we've got 12 periods in our day. But what we're doing is we're eliminating the lunchtime periods, the four, five, the six, seven. So there are really only eight periods in our day that you can take classes. So we're gonna fill each one of those periods up with something, okay? You have to take an English, so pick the English that you would like to take, okay? If you are going to take an AP class, you need to get a recommendation from your current English 10 teacher that says, yes, you're likely going to be successful in an AP class. AP stands for advanced placement, it is college level, okay? So take this, uh, to heart when you're looking at taking your English class. Remember the number. You see the number 1210 or 1275 or 1280. Those numbers are important. Circle that number because if you remember, the numbers are coming from here. Okay. That's the number that you are looking at. Okay. So back to this. We move on to algebra. Again, like I told you earlier, if you're currently in algebra fundamentals, you're going to circle 4200 algebra. If you're currently in Algebra, you're going to choose geometry. If you're currently in geometry, you're going to choose algebra two. Those are the classes that you will be circling. For science, we are going to also ask your science teachers for some input here. Uh, so they will give us some names of students that they believe uh, would be better suited in intro to biology. Um, but go ahead and sign up for the one that you feel most comfortable with. If you're taking currently physical science, you will either take intro to biology or biology. Um, biology is what most of you will end up taking. Um, if you were really struggling and, and barely getting by in, in physical science, you may want to go with the intro to biology um, as your choice. Uh, you can take chemistry, but in order to take chemistry, you have to have already taken biology. Um, and then you have to be also have already taken algebra two, or you can take algebra two at the same time. So concurrently enrolled in algebra two, and you can take that chemistry class. If you are a bio student that has not taken Algebra 2 yet and is not in Algebra 2, then you can go to Forensics, okay? And again, those classes are all outlined and detailed in the course offerings book for you so that you can um, decide what class is best fit for you. You all have to take U.S. History, so there's not really a choice there. You're going to circle that 2200. And then we get down to the, so half your day is over. First through fourth period, done. Fifth through eighth now. The last part of your day, and again, these are not going to be in any order. You could have English the last period of the day. These are just getting them uh, so that you fill in the block, basically. If you remember on this schedule paper here, we've got ones and 0.5s and 0.25s. The ones are full year, the 0.5s are half year, and the 0.25s are half year. Okay, so keeping that in mind, oops, let me go back a second here. There we go. We got half and half. So health is only a half credit, so it's only a half a year long. 
okay? So it's only going to take up one half, one block. If we get down here and you want to take Spanish again, Spanish 2, you would write Spanish 2, 5220, Spanish 2, 5220. You got to write them in both blocks because it takes the full year. Same thing in block number seven. If you were going to take a full year elective, uh, choir, for example, you put men's choir, and put the number, men's choir, put the number. If you're a band student, band again, remember, is, is going to take two full periods. So we have band, 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 and you will write that in there. For your last period, you can choose a study hall. In order to do, the, in order to do that, you just leave it blank, okay? If you would rather not have a study hall, you can choose another class. I recommend you take a study hall. Um, but again, if you're in the band, 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 you might you might want another class like Spanish or a choir or some other computer science principles class that you think is pretty neat. You can put that in here as well, okay? Choose your phys ed. Make sure you do that up here in box number five, whether you want regular phys ed, swimming, strength and conditioning, or that officiating course or any other PE elective that we offer. You will write that number in here, okay? If you're using the phys ed waiver and you do not want to take phys ed, uh, you can do that. And then this box, this box becomes blank and you can choose another elective in that spot, another half year elective. If you have not passed pathways yet, please make sure you take pathways this year as well, okay? So that's good, we're moving on. So save that practice schedule. Once you have all of the numbers circled that you want to take, Make sure you save that practice schedule because the following week on, on February 10th, we are going to release another video that's going to show you how to log into our computer systems with a one-time user access code. And you will take the numbers from that practice sheet and you will punch them into the computer. Once you submit that, your schedule is done. And then that access code is no longer good. Um, if you would like to change that after you punch it in, you just have to get a hold of me and I will be able to change it for you without a problem. So if you if you accidentally chose French and then you really wanted to choose Spanish and you realize it after you submit it, just shoot me an email and I'll change it. It's not a big deal. Uh, you will have nine days from the 10th to the 19th to make a schedule. If you don't get that schedule made, I'm going to make it for you. There is an option for Vanguard, okay? We're still going to choose a schedule so it's full, one through eight. If you get into Vanguard for a half day, not a problem. I'll just remove some of those classes off of the off of your elective side. I'll take some of those classes away so that you can take that, that Vanguard once you get into Vanguard. It's much easier for me to remove a few classes than it is for me to try and guess what classes you want if you get into Vanguard um, and you, or if you don't get into Vanguard rather, and you didn't have that taken care of. So Vanguard has a deadline of March 1st. So if you would like to enroll in Vanguard, make sure you do that before the March 1st deadline. Obviously, just so you don't forget, March 1st is the deadline. If you have any kind of questions at all regarding the scheduling that we just went over, um, the packet that was sent to you through final forms, please don't hesitate to email me, shellw at fremontschools.net, or call me at 419-334-5467 during uh, school hours. I will answer the phone. If, if not, I can call you back the next day, and we can um, make sure that your questions are answered and your schedule is set. Look for uh, the next video, which will be coming out most likely around the 10th of February, and uh, you will be able to then schedule in our data system. Thank you very much for your time, and have a good day.